right. Whoa, that's loud. Um, how's everyone doing this evening? Good. I'm pumped to be here. I mean, we're back together again. This is kind of nice. It has been four years since I've been in London, and I don't think I've ever landed in London in like a sunny day like it is today. It's, is this like the new thing? Um, I just want to welcome all of you. Uh, thank you for coming. It just feels so great to again be back together. This is where the energy starts for many of us, uh, community. And uh, yeah, and it's great to be back in London and to finally finally gather. So uh, four years since I have uh, been here and since we've done a tour throughout Europe, you know, meeting with customers and and meeting with teams and and sharing some of what we're working on. Uh, so four years is a long time, but in some ways it's like you know pretty fast in this crazy crazy evolving creative world that we live in. And a lot has changed. A lot has changed, and I would say that many of these changes for the creative world have been for the better. I feel like there's never been a more exciting time to be in the creative industry than there is today. Uh, you know, not too long ago, the daily life of creative work felt a bit lonely at times. You know, we would define ourselves pretty narrowly by di by discipline in previous decades. You were either an illustrator or a motion graphics artist or a photographer. And you, you would often work alone, isolated in these tools that you alone would use. Uh, but now, for many of us, creativity is opening up in new ways. For one thing, creative, creativity has become far more collaborative than ever before. For many of us, when we start a new project, the first question we ask ourselves is, who are we making this with? You know, who are we working with alongside? Who are we going to share assets with? And who are we going to connect with before we actually get started? And then we kick off a modern creative process that is distinctly different from the past, where we can see each other's work in real time, oftentimes in the same document, where we leverage each other's assets versus starting from scratch, and where sharing is the new networking. The modern creative world brings us together like never before. And the nature of what we are creating and for what mediums has also changed quite a bit. Most big company marketing budgets have shifted over 50% of their spend from traditional mediums like graphic design or television spots to social. And social, as we all know, is not segmented by media type. It's all mixed media. And whether it's on Instagram or TikTok, creative segments are all coming together. And I think there are implications for how we collaborate and also for the tools that we're going to use in the future that need to consider that. Not only are creative professionals challenged to create for mixed media these days, but everyone else, from small businesses and students to creator, content creators of all kinds, recognize the opportunity to build a brand and stand out on social platforms. And some call this the creator economy, but in truth, it's just the world finally getting excited, getting excited, everyone finally getting excited about what creativity can mean for them. We've entered this era of humanity where creativity is the new productivity. And job security will require everyone to develop creative and storytelling skills, especially as robots and algorithms and AI takes over so many job functions. The next gen, the next generation, must be outfitted with the tools and skills to really stand out and express themselves visually to tell a story. At Adobe, we feel the key to helping people create in new ways is to bring creativity to the web the phone, and make it much easier for creative people to collaborate. We recently launched Adobe Express, a web and mobile app that gives anyone the tools to complete quick creative tasks and express themselves. With Express, you can either create something completely new, or you can get started with an inventory of literally millions of pieces of stock and templates, and then you can add your own photos and text and your own brand assets or colors and really make it yours. And we designed Adobe Express to make creativity more welcoming to the world, with no learning curve required. But Adobe Express is also great for creative pros who need to get something done quickly to complement their work. You need a quick thumbnail for a video for YouTube or TikTok. Do you need a quick QR code for a project you're working on? Do you want to make a quick edit to a PDF? You can give Adobe Express a try. It's, helped, it's designed to help you make that all happen really quickly. And Adobe Express is also connected with Creative Cloud libraries. So we actually built this thinking that pros and non-pros are all going to work together, and that's part of the future. Beyond Express, we are on a mission to bring Creative Cloud to the web, to unlock all sorts of workflows and possibilities. So we've brought Photoshop to the web so that you can actually start making light edits on Photoshop projects anywhere and share a link to a project with anyone so that they can just review it without having to download Photoshop and learn how to use a, you know, a big desktop application. 
And we've also just released some of the most requested features for Photoshop on the web from the initial audience that we invited into the product. Things like curves, refine edge, dodge and burn that give you a lot more editing power in the browser. We have a lot more coming uh, that we're excited to bring to you on the web, so stay tuned for more on that front. We are um, also adding and, uh, and building a bunch of very powerful new web features to streamline creative collaboration. So some of you know, last year we welcomed the Frame.io team to Adobe. Frame.io is the premier web-based video collaboration platform. So it's integrated into Premiere Pro and After Effects, and it makes it super easy to get feedback on video from any stakeholders um, that you work with any day and have that flow right into the tools that you use. We also introduce cloud documents across many of our product, products, which make it easy to share files and access them anywhere and make sense of changes that are happening with version control, which customers have asked for for many years. And we're rolling out Share for Review across Creative Cloud, which lets you share a file from your app and see reviewers' comments stream into the new review panel in real time. Again, making everyone a stakeholder of creativity. We've made a lot of progress bringing creativity to the web and streamlining, streamlining collaboration, but there's certainly more to come, and uh, we're excited to share more updates as we have them. Another great development in the creative world over the last few years is that creative people are more able to get attribution and opportunity from their work. For too long, agencies and companies get the credit rather than the creatives behind the actual work. Today, there are just so many ways for creative people to get credit for the work that they do and get new commissions as a result. The problem, this problem, you know, the lack of attribution in the creative world, um, was one of the main inspirations for Behance, the company that uh, I founded with my team prior to joining Adobe. Today, more than 31 million members are using Behance to showcase their work, get jobs and freelance gigs, and build a following that ultimately yields opportunity for their careers. And then there are some new technologies that enable digital artists to engage collectors and monetize work. There are NFTs and other digital online experiences emerging that are you know, interesting ways for creatives to develop their careers. And like all new technologies, it's super early days, and there's just a lot of stuff to figure out. But it's fascinating just to think about how these uh, new technologies will unfold. And at Adobe, what we're trying to do is address the problems and opportunities in these new technologies. We're advocating for eco-conscious solutions on blockchains and ways of promoting transparency. And we're helping artists get credit for their work with something that we call the Content Authenticity Initiative. So this is a consortium of now over 100 companies, including New York Times and Twitter and BBC and many others, that Adobe organized, building an open standard for securely documenting the provenance of a digital asset. So what that means is that as these pieces of media go about, and we're not sure whether we can trust it, we're not sure who actually created it, we can actually start to see that data um, through an open source set of technologies that all creative tools are using. Another example of technology changing creativity for the better is artificial intelligence, which is just saving creative people hours and hours of time, and in some cases, letting them do things that they just honestly could never have even imagined. Uh, creativity is all about exploring and trying things, not repeating and repeating and repeating mundane things. For example, the speech-to-text capability in Premiere Pro. This uses our artificial intelligence engine, Adobe Sensei, to automatically create captions and video. Now, that's a huge time saver in itself. It's important for accessibility for people who need captions, but it also means that now you can navigate your video by text. So if you want to make a cut, around a subject, you know, when the subject in your video mentioned the word roses, for instance, you can just search for roses and go through every piece of the video instantly where that subject is saying that and then make the cuts rather than have to navigate and, you know, and spend all this extra time. And in Photoshop, in Photoshop, we added the Sensei-powered neural filters. Neural filters can help you change a subject's expression. You can change a summer landscape to winter. And with a new upcoming neural filter, you can, without anything more than the push of a button, restore an old or da damaged image. Now, lots of Photoshop users were able to restore an image before, but it just took a very, very long time. And there was a lot of tedious work in terms of getting rid of all those little specks, fixing scratches, and restoring all the colors. But with the photo restoration neural filter, it just all happens in seconds. And if you don't know how to restore an image manually, well, all of a sudden you have this new creative superpower. Technology 
is also opening up whole new mediums. I mean, the primary example right now is the new medium of 3D and immersive content. Smart companies are using 3D design to accelerate their product design and creation of marketing materials today. And of course, 3D will be the foundation of the metaverse and other immersive experiences to come. Technology and apps like the Substance 3D Collection has made creating in 3D so much easier and accessible. And that is opening up new and huge opportunities for creative people and modern companies alike. Designers with 3D ex expertise are in tremendous demand right now, and creatives are responding to that demand. Over the last year, we did a number of surveys, and we found that the number of people who tell us that they're working in 3D has climbed 20% in just the last year. The trend toward 3D creation really picked up speed during the pandemic. I mean, two years ago, when we were all isolated, it was impossible to get a big group of people together to shoot product images for catalogs or websites, you know, to get that food stylist on the set, to get all these people coordinated, organized, and traveling, etc. And so what did companies do? Some companies started to render those images and applications like Substance 3D instead of shooting them. And they found that 3D creation was one of those unique, better, faster, cheaper moments. At Ben & Jerry's, for instance, by switching to 3D creation, they were able to produce thousands of visual assets in weeks instead of months, and for a fraction of the cost of a lot of the traditional photo shoots they used to have to do region by region. 3D creation has also been a tremendous help in designing new products. So French apparel maker Salomon, for instance, is using 3D to design shoes. And Salomon's designers found that 3D design cut the time needed to create a prototype by an average of two-thirds. And perhaps more importantly, by using Substance 3D products, they were able to produce 10 times, or 10 or 12 times as many, I think they said, as many design iterations as they would normally do. Why? Because it takes so much time to source materials and textures and communicate with different production offices, et cetera, and now they could all do it in a rendering you know, 3D pipeline quite quickly. So, as you all know, creativity is often a function of trying lots of different approaches to see what works. And 3D design is such an efficient way, and it gives you a lot more time to experiment. So that's how 3D design is helping creative people and companies today. In the future, it's going to be even more essential. Right now, as all of you know, the word on everyone's lips is metaverses. And I'm excited about the potential of these new enveloping mediums that are going to bring us together in ways that are simply not bound by space, time, and physics. There's a lot we don't know about the so-called metaverse, but there is something that we do know. It is only successful if it is filled with rich, interactive, beautiful, and three-dimensional content. And so the way we get metaverse ready as teams and as creatives ourselves is to start producing content in 3D. And by creating in 3D, you're building the skills, the workflows, and the partnerships that you're going to need to create great metaverse experiences. And you give yourself the freedom to experiment. You're building up a strong library of 3D assets and designs for your team that you can then deploy in, pro in pilot projects and collaborations or fun trials that present themselves. The reality is that no one knows what the metaverse will actually look like or where it will be popularized or what harder will emerge or whatever. It'll come together through creative people and companies trying a lot of different approaches. And by developing your 3D design skills and building a storehouse of content, you have the freedom to jump in and see what works and what doesn't and become one of the architects of this new and exciting medium. Now, content is just one layer of what goes into creating a metaverse experience. Devices like VR headsets and AR glasses will be essential. We'll need to develop an economy that governs transactions within these immersive experiences, and we'll need to deliver the experiences in really smart ways. And to de effectively deliver metaverse experiences, brands are going to need to personalize them and analyze what's working and what isn't. That's something that Adobe's Experience Cloud is being designed to help you do. In fact, this week, we announced an update to Adobe Analytics, one of our products which allows brands to measure and analyze engagement with 3D objects and immersive experiences, among other factors. OK, so if you're not already working in 3D, I hope I've kind of whetted your appetite to give it a shot. I'm now going to turn it over to my colleague, Chantel Benson, our head of product for augmented reality. You're in for a treat. Uh, Chantel will explain how to get started in Adobe's 3D design tools, uh, tools uh, Substance 3D and Air Adobe Aero. Um, 
and uh, it's pretty cool. Check it out. Chantel.